Okay, what we're going to do right now is we are going to work on the Winthrop project. And so as we get into this, we are going to start from the basics. And uh, with the uh, this particular project, we can use a template like we did with, uh, <clears throat> with the custom garage. And so there's a lot of similarities between this and the custom garage. So you'll see them as we get into here. But I'm just going to go ahead and start from uh, square one. And the first thing we're always going to do is we are going to download our template which is going to be out in um, uh, out here and you're going to download the template from Blackboard and so it's up here under Winthrop Project uh, and you go ahead and you'll just download this and so we download the Winthrop template by the way if you need to you can go here and you can save uh, you can actually print up the project again this is the PDFs of the project that you have if you need to print it but uh, we'll go to Winthrop template and I'll download it and it shows up down here and then what you want to do is you want to go you can go and show it in the folder so we see it and here it is right here I've downloaded it a couple times and then if you right click on it you have the choice to copy it and then you can copy it someplace uh, that is makes sense to you in this case I'm actually doing this from my home and so I'm going to go to Monroe Community College the Winthrop house and I'm going to go ahead and drop it here and it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite it and well, I just made another copy here so there it is right there so once I've got that, I would go to Revit. And in Revit, I would go to File, New, and I would go and browse out to that template. And that template is out in D. And I'm going to go to Monroe Community College and to Winthrop. And Shazam, there it is. They're both the same. I can grab either one. You'll notice that they're both the same size. So either one works fine. So go ahead and open that and hit OK. Now once I do this, it brings me into my uh, my my first floor plan and uh, everything else is populated nicely you'll see that I've actually got a lot of things in the template that are going to help you one of which is like these elevations actually are labeled already with the um, uh, particular sheet that they're going to be associated with but that's something we'll get to later so now I um, just want to explain what we've got going on here I've, I've already made some walls for you now the structure that we're going to be getting to right here it's actually uh, you know if you take a look at the front sheet You've actually got a concrete um, a basement, you've got brick on the first floor, and you've got siding on the second floor. Now the brick on the first floor is what's called face brick, it's a, or just a very thin brick veneer. So if I go here, I've already made these for you, and you'll see you've got a sided exterior wall here, which is what I made for you, and this is the other one. Uh, the other one is called exterior wall six and a half inches. So let's just take a look at it, just to get an idea as far as what it looks like. <clears throat> And over here, we've got, uh, if we click on edit right up here, we see the structures that are part of it. So you'll see that right here, you've got three quarter inch of common brick. And essentially what this is right here, that's like a, a, a thin veneer that actually then snaps into this blue styrofoam insulation. And then you've got plywood sheathing behind that, which is, uh, I've used one inch as the, as the uh, nominal kind of uh, uh, width. Um, softwood lumber, three and a half inches for the stud and then gypsum wallboard, uh, which is half inch. Okay, so all the way around, it's six and a half inches, so we have that. Now, if I want to get another look at it, I can go over to a section view, and the section view looks like this right here. So whatever I have selected is going to be highlighted in blue. So in this case, the brick is, is highlighted, and then you have the insulation, and then you have the plywood sheathing, and then you have the stud, and then you have the wallboard. Okay, so that's what that looks like, and we'll go just so we have an idea as far as how that all works. So I'm going to cancel out of there. So now we know what we're dealing with. And so I want to go ahead and start <clears throat> using this exterior wall. So I want to do this. I want to use the finished face exterior because my dimensions are actually on page um, A101, sheet A101. They are located there. And so one of the things that you want to do is you begin to work on this. <clears throat> you want to begin to uh, start it. And you want to make sure that you're seeing the, uh, the information uh, that the wall is showing you. Right now I don't see it. So I'm going to change my <clears throat> visualization down here to find. And when I do that, you'll notice that you now see the layers here. So that's totally cool. Now my garage, it is actually 24 feet in this dimension. So I go to drag it up and type in 24. And then actually over in this direction, it's 23 feet. Okay, and then just to let you know what the, what the dimension is here, it's actually 18 inches. So to, in Revit, everything is considered to be uh, increments of a foot. So if you want to do 18 inches, you can do it two ways. 
you get, well, actually three ways. You can type in 18 and type in inches. Type in um, one foot six, or just type in 1.5, as in 1.5 feet. So we'll just say one foot six. And we're gonna go there, and then we're gonna go over. And then um, my actual house is 27 feet in each direction. So it's like a big old cube. And so we're just gonna go ahead and go in this direction, 27. And then we're gonna go back up here, one foot six. And we wanna go ahead and just complete that. So um, I can go ahead and uh, click modify and I'm all done. So that's what I basically have right there. So let's take a look at it and see uh, what we have. And uh, as we take a look at this, we can see that, yep, we've got essentially this right here. And you have this kind of, uh, this line fill, which is actually gonna look like the siding. For some reason, when I did this, um, that became the default. So if you don't wanna see that for right now, you just go to consistent colors and a little more, uh, might make a little more sense doing it that way. So we have that. Now that's essentially what we have. <clears throat> okay, now what we're gonna do is verify that our dimensions are correct. So to do that, there's two different ways to do it. You can use uh, temporary dimensions, uh, which are actually um, by clicking here, and it gives me a temporary dimension for this right here. Or if I click on here, it gives me a temporary dimension out here. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and bring this out to here, and bring this out to here. And there we have 24 feet, boom, we're good to go. Oh, by the way, I did something there kind of quickly. I wanna explain what I did. So when I click on this wall, this is a temporary dimension, you can tell because it's blue. And I take these grips and I, and I can, as I click on them, you'll notice that they go from the uh, inside to the outside to the middle. And so you have these different choices, okay? So what it looks right, if you click on this icon right here, it's actually gonna save that and make it a permanent dimension. So we click there and we're good to go. So that's just 24 feet. So we're good to go there. Now let's see here, if I go here, this tells me 22 feet, five and a half inches. Let's see how we're doing there. I do the same thing, I go over here, and that says 23 feet, I like that. So I click there, boom. So we're looking good so far, the garage is, is correct. Now over here, we're gonna go up to uh, this particular area. Uh, let's see if we'll take, take, take it this way. Okay, what we're gonna do here is we'll go to here, and these are called witness lines, by the way. And what I'm doing is I'm moving these witness lines right there. And uh, when I move the witness lines, it gives me the dimension. And 27 feet, again, that's correct. So I click on this to make it permanent. And then I just need to get this last one right here. So we get this, if I click here, it gives me this. And I'll go ahead and go here and here. And if I click on that, make that permanent. Okay, so I went ahead and I did that and, and we're in good shape. Now one thing about this, if we take a look at it in 3D again, is uh, one of the things about this view, if we take a look at it right now, you'll see that the house and the garage are basically both um, setting at the same level. And that's not the case. If you take a look closely at the at the uh, at the elevations, you'll see that the garage actually sits at grade. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these. I'm going to tell them that I want its base constraint to be the grade. All right, so that's going to be grade, and you see what that just did? Just drop that, and made it lower. So now, if I take a look at that, that's actually down there, and that's actually correct. So we have that. So we are in good shape. We've got all that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the, um, the house from the garage with a wall. So to do that I'll go to wall and there's another wall type in here that I prepared for the interior walls and it's a four and a half inch wall. Okay it's just called right here interior wall four and a half inches and I made that and it's essentially just uh, gypsum on both sides with a stud in the middle. I can go ahead and click right here and when I click right there, I can go ahead and pull it straight up, and boom, we are good to go. So I've got that, and that separated that off. So now I've got my house over here, and I've got my garage over here. So we're looking pretty good, and if I take a look at that in 3D again, we're looking good, and then I can go ahead and take that wall, and uh, at this point, I could actually tell it to go down to the grade level as well. So I'll just go ahead and do that, just to kind of make it a little more complete. And so we've got that. Okay, now once we have that, we are now going to work on putting in our doors, or what's called fenestration in uh, AutoCAD speak. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to go ahead and put in our doors. Now when you put in doors, you're gonna notice that there's these numbers on these. And uh, this one up here is actually door number six. And if I take a look at my door schedule, go to the back on page A107, uh, door number six is single flush 36 by 84. Single flush 36 by 84. So if I want to put that in, I'll go ahead to door, 
And I'll go to single flush, and I'm gonna make it 36 by 80, just make sure I got the right one. Single flush, 36 by 84. So I'll go ahead and take it, and I can go ahead and place it right along here. And as I begin to put it in here, um, I can go ahead and drop it. And I didn't put any dimensions in here for that door, so it's just gonna be placed close as like an exterior exit. And then it swings inside. If you take a look at page A101.1, it shows you that door does actually swing inside. So we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, we're good to go there. And it's gonna go ahead and move it over just a little bit. Like about that, one foot six is a good good uh, dimension from there. So we'll go ahead and leave it at one foot six. Okay, so we got that. That was easy enough, that one in there. Except I did one thing uh, that I should not have done. And that was, I put this in here before I actually put the tag on. So let me show you one quick thing I can do here. I can go ahead and put that in again, only this time. I'm gonna put my auto tag on. And that is right here, it says tag on placement. So what that's gonna do is gonna to start to tag my doors as I put them in. So I'll do the same thing, I'll drop it in here. And uh, when I drop it, it puts it in there and it gives it a number. And the number right there is 21. That's actually not gonna be correct. I actually want that to be something different. And we'll go ahead and make it two feet. What the heck, we'll go two feet. And, uh, and then uh, at this point, I'm not worried too much about that location since I didn't put a dimension on there. So this one is actually supposed to be number six. So I'll hit number six, and then a couple other things you can do is I can, uh, if I click on that tag, and I just wanna get the tag here, right there, I can go ahead and flip if I hit my space bar, and that goes ahead and leaves that in there. So I've got that in place, and now it automatically tagged it. Now I wanna go ahead and I wanna put a window in here. So I take a look at the window, and that's actually, if I take a look at that, that is shown as on, on sheet A101, it's window one. So I'll go to window, and uh, on 107, I wanna find out what window that is, and window number one is fixed garage window, that's what it's called. So go up here, and uh, makes it easier, I named that for you. So I just went and called it fixed right here, and I called it garage window. So I'll go ahead and grab that, and I'll go ahead and drop it here. Now notice that as you put your cursor here, that um, Revit is attempting to center this. And right now it did. It looks like it's 11 feet, five and a half. It's basically thinking, yeah, I think you want to center this. So I'll go ahead and click there and boom, we're good to go. All right, and what it, it did not, actually it didn't give me the, uh, I should have actually told it that I wanted it also to tag on placement. So I'm gonna go ahead and go here and 11 foot five and a half, we got that. And so we got that in place and I click on modify and let's just take a look and see how we're, how we're doing there. So that's looking good. Uh, one thing about this door is it should be actually sitting at grade. So I'll go ahead and just change that, uh, the level, to grade. And when I do that, it adjusts itself downward. And then that window is fine. And that leaves us with, uh, for the garage, we need one more door, and that's going to be the overhead sectional door. And uh, again, there's a number for that one. And then the number for that one is number seven. And if we look at number seven, what we're going to do is we see number seven, as far as the door goes, is overhead sectional garage door. And so we'll go to door and we'll look here, overhead sectional garage door. And it is right here, over sectional garage door is what it's called. So we'll go to garage door, we'll go ahead and touch it right here. And I actually want it to be like that. And I want it to center. So right now, again, 11, uh, feet two and three quarters on each side that's center. So I'll go ahead and click and uh, We have a tag on placement there. So we're good to go there. So that one's also tagged and uh, What we want to do is if you want to select this I can hold my cursor over and hit tab and then I can click on it and I'm gonna make that one that is that's supposed to be number seven. I think it is so I went ahead and made that uh, So I think seven is correct. So I'll go ahead and make sure that is the way it should be and it is. so number seven is correct and uh, grabbing it again, I want to go ahead and I want to hit my space bar. And then I can go ahead and move it off a little bit or leave it where it was. Either way, it's, it's, it's fine. So we'll just leave it like that. So once I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and grab the garage door and tell it it also has to be down to grade. But let's just take a look at what it looks like first. So we'll go to here and we'll take a look at that. A couple things about that. First of all, you'll notice that the inside is showing the... Uh, the sections and we don't want it that way. So we're gonna right click on it and we're going to go ahead and flip the facing. All right, so it flips the facing. Now we can see that it's outward. And now we're gonna go ahead and change its level to grade, which we do and boom, we're good to go there. So now 
that pretty much completes the garage. Okay, so we're good to go there. So that's looking pretty good. Now moving over here to this side, we've got uh, windows that have to go here. So looking at this window right here, uh, the kitchen window is window number five. And going back to our schedule, number five is uh, going to be um, slider with trim, five feet by three feet. So slider with trim, five feet by three feet. So I'll go to here and look at my slider windows. Uh, there it is, five foot by three feet two. And I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna drop it right around here. And uh, just to kind of give it a location. Okay, so now once I've got that, it gave me uh, number five, which is uh, what it's supposed to be. So we're good to go there. And now what I wanna do is I wanna actually place it correctly. Okay, because right now it's supposed to be seven feet, four inches. Okay, it's supposed to be centered. So what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and I want to change that uh, right here. Okay, this is what I want, seven foot four. So seven foot four, boom, and went in and changed that. And then, uh, eh, I'm not sure if they came, it didn't give me the dimension I wanted, but that's okay. So then I can put a dimension like this. I can go ahead and I can go to the outside here. And I'm using my tab key right now to find it. I click there. And I'll click the midpoint there, and we are good to go. Seven foot four, all right? So we've got that. Okay, so we've got that location, and uh, that is good. And then what we're going to do here, just going to do a little bit of cleanup here. And this is something I did not do on the sheet I gave you. I should have cleaned this up. Uh, I printed it before I made these changes. So you just want to kind of move that right here. And this particular door is not being seen because the cut line is... Um, is uh, is not oriented so we can actually get that so that's why you can't see that right there uh, okay so we got this right here and then we could go ahead and uh, go ahead and we could move these dimensions out a little bit if we wanted to there we go and then we could take this and we could move uh, this uh, particular window marker here or there or somewhere we can just gonna do that so that's good to go okay now from there the next thing we want to do is we also have a triple glass door at the upper right and that's that is actually door number five so door number five you take a look at it it says door number five is a triple glass 108 by 84 so we want to go ahead and go to door and we're going to look at our content again and uh, triple glass 108 by 84 so we're going to go here and drop it right around here and uh, we'll go ahead and drop it and then it goes ahead and centers it and that goes ahead and makes that number uh, eight and that should actually be number five according to what we have right here so we're gonna go ahead and change that number there to five keep it consistent and then uh, we got that now the next thing you want to do is you want to make it uh, sit at the right location and so the right location is seven feet seven inches so we'll go seven foot seven and there we go so that looks pretty darn good there so let's just take a look at it again in 3d you always want to go back and check it and make sure it's looking right so yep that's looking pretty good and if you want to get this kind of look here you can go to realistic and uh gives you a very nice look there as far as what that looks with the nice um brick veneer on there so we're getting there looking good moving back here uh, i then have a window that has to go here and that's window number four and so going back to my uh, going back to there I'll go to my window and it's a double hung with trim 36 by 72 so I'm going to window uh, double hung with trim 36 by 72 okay and we'll go ahead and drop this right around here okay and again uh, one of the beautiful things about when you're working with Revit is you can go ahead and drop them in and uh, once we do drop it in I can click on it and I can say okay I want that to be uh, actually it's seven foot four and so I'm gonna go ahead and make this seven foot four boom there we are okay so we're good to go there so then if I want to put a dimension on there that is completely doable uh, by going from the midpoint here and going over here to the outside and going there and that gives me that seven foot four dimension we are good to go there and I'll go ahead and move this out of the way a little bit so that it's uh, like that okay so we've got that so we got seven foot four and uh, last thing is the front door which is uh, front door is number four 
And uh, number four right here is uh, door exterior, single entry, half arch glass wood, 36 by 84, big long string. So we'll go ahead and try to find that. And uh, down here, it looks like we got it right here. Door exterior, single entry, half glass wood. And uh, what we want here is uh, 36 by, um, by 84, yep, so that's the one we want. And uh, we'll go ahead and take this and we'll drop it right around there. And uh, we'll go ahead and leave that there. And then uh, uh, the number has to be number four, so we'll go ahead and change that to number four. And I hold my cursor over here and hit my tab key until I see what I want. Make that number four. All right, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that it is a uh, proper distance away here. And so I want it to go to the center, and the center is right there, and I want to make that seven foot four, you know, so that these uh, doors and windows all kind of appear the same distance. So then if I got that, I can uh, then swing the door in, and then that's how my layout is right there. So we are good to go there. Um, okay, so that is basically what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it. And essentially, we are in good shape right there. We've got a good, good foundation right there to start with. And we are just going to take a little, uh, we're going to stop for a second here. And we will come back in a minute here. So we'll have a second, um, second go at this in a second. So that completes the very basics of the first floor.